On this episode of Arts Weekly, I'm speaking with Kelly Updike from the Embassy Theater. We talked about the redevelopment downtown with Harrison Square and the ball field, and that really sparked a lot more interest in our building. Um, we had um, floors three through seven that had sat empty. And Beth McLeish from the new American Youth Ballet. We do encourage our students, if possible, to go to a high-level university program. Um, you may know that Indiana University has one of the highest, um, or considered the top-ranked ballet department mm -hmm. in the country. We have two students that graduated last year who went into that university. That was a, um, a big accomplishment for our school. This is Arts Weekly. Arts Weekly is a production of the College of Visual and Performing Arts at IPFW, offering degrees in fine arts, music, theater, and visual communication and design. IPFW, the energy of arts. Hi, I'm Chuck O'Connor. You're watching Arts Weekly. Joining me is Kelly Updike, Executive Director of the Embassy Theater. She's here to talk about all the upcoming events and changes happening at the Embassy. Always good to have you on the show, Kelly. Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure. I appreciate it. You know, we're going to talk about some of the goals of the Embassy and mm -hmm. some of the events that are coming up this spring, but I always love to hear the story about the Embassy Theater and how it got started and how it got saved and how the people of the community came together and can you tell us that again? I will, and I, I will keep it short because I, I, you're right, I can tell the two-hour version, but I won't, um, <laughs> because it is, it is a lovely story. Um, the embassy was started, it opened in 1928 as the Emboyd Theater, and it was a very popular vaudeville house and a silent movie palace, and it, into it was built the Grand Page Theater pipe organ, and it's a rare instrument, and a lot, a lot of them were built. And, um, it flourished and was a very popular place. It also was wrapped by the Indiana Hotel, and those two opened up at the same time, and that was also a very popular place for people to go and stay. And it was the first air-conditioned building in the city, I'm told. So we all move along, and, and life is good, and talkies come, and that works out for everybody, and stage productions, and um, the advent of microphones and those kinds of things in our lovely um, acoustically correct building. But um, we hit the 60s and 70s, and people start leaving downtowns and not thinking they're very viable anymore. And they start going to malls and suburbs and those kinds of things. And a lot of, there were other theaters in Fort Wayne, and they were torn down. And mm -hmm. the embassy was the only one remaining. And they, it never had a dark day. People were still coming in to play the Grand Page organ and to have organ concerts and do um, travelogues and those kinds of things and when a small group of men uh, who were doing these events heard that they might tear down the theater and make it a parking lot and build up the hotel side of the business into something like assisted living they wanted to save the pipe organ and to do that you have to save the house uh, that into which it's built because it's a massive thing and they rally the community um, there weren't a lot of of people who were interested in saving it at a high corporate level or a high um, public level, um, but there were average people like you and I and, and, and our neighbors and our friends and our coworkers, and they gave their babysitting money, they gave their, they sold cheese, the slices mm -hmm. of cheese out of the lobby, and they had garage sales, and they brought in and sold bumper stickers and had events at the mall, and they raised $250,000 and they bought the embassy in, in 1974 and it became the embassy in 1952, but they, they, they bought it and they made it um, the nonprofit organization it is today. And, um, and we've been chugging along, I guess, ever since and are, are very much a big part of downtown and, and we think you know, we're kind of the crown jewel. I of agree, what goes I think on. it's a landmark of downtown Thank and you. it really mm -hmm. was at the 11th hour yes. that that building was saved. And I guess nowadays we have a lot, we're, we're a little bit more conscientious about saving our old buildings. You know, St. Francis just yes. bought the Scottish Rite. And, yes. And, you know, we're, we, we think twice, but boy, back in those days, that was quite an accomplishment. And, uh, and we're so glad it's still there. Of course, things have changed recently downtown. Mm -hmm. How has the uh, 
the, the, the car, courtyard at the Marriott mm -hmm. and, and the Parkview Field and all that stuff that's going on around the embassy affected the embassy. It's been great. Um, I think whatever is good for everybody is good for, for the neighbors and colleagues. And it's been, it's helped make downtown even more, it, to keep it busier and more things going on. Um, we are integral to that, that those, those constructions because as they were building the hotel, the hotel said that it needed a covered passage over to the conference center. And the only way to do that, because you couldn't go under the street and you couldn't go across into their glass building at, at the Grand Wayne Center, they asked if they could go through our third floor. Mm. There was, you know, talk about something different and out of out of the box thinking. And our third our third floor, which was um, Indiana Hotel hotel rooms, um, those are that's now a public corridor, and people can pass from one sky bridge at the courtyard by Marriott, come through our building, and it looks like the embassy, and you come out on the sky bridge to the Grand Wayne and go across on Jefferson, and it's very helpful. More conferences are coming to the city, um, bringing in more dollars and more visitors, and people who are enjoying our buildings, and it's. It's been really good. It's helped us. It is really cool. You know, we just had the uh, IMEA, yes. Indiana Music Educators Edu Association Very Conference, <laughs> uh, and uh, of course IPFW had a had a part in that as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. But it was so cool because you can go down there and you can you can go to the convention center mm -hmm. and, like you say, walk through a sky bridge, right. get over to the embassy, see a, a music event there, take another sky bridge, go over to the courtyard Marriott, yeah. uh, have dinner. It's all connected. It is. And you were saying that that this has really helped. Fort Wayne attract conventions, true? It, it is. Um, IMEA had been in Indianapolis for a very long time and they they started looking elsewhere. They feel we treat them like kings and queens because we do. We respect what mm -hmm. they do and what they're doing and it's affordable for them to do it and we're very cosmopolitan. They don't have to go outside if they don't need to. Last week was a good example of that because we had very much a January in Fort Wayne sure did. <laughs> type of situation going on with the weather and they were able to to still do all the things they needed to do right. and be safe and warm and do it. So What's the impact, the nice. economic, Kelly, what's the economic impact of something like uh, the Embassy Theater on the, on the community? Well, we just did a, finished an economic impact study and it was conducted by the Community Research Institute here at IPFW. So we were thrilled to, to be able to have them do that because they're so well respected and they are so professional in, in all the work that they do. And they surveyed patrons all last season. Um, we did it. We did the survey throughout the whole fiscal year for us, and our impact on um, Fort Wayne is almost four million dollars a and year. And that's something. And and we're pleased to hear that. And we draw people um, more than a hundred thousand visitors annually, and a third of them come from outside Allen County. Mm -hmm. And this is all good information that we can use to, as we consider programming, as we work on marketing, as we work with our promoters who are renting our building and 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 helping them draw people to this this area and as we try to figure out what to do with our floors that are still undeveloped and on the Indiana Hotel side this is this is good information to have and and also validates our mission you know for we are mm -hmm. a nonprofit yet we continue to give back to the community and provide good things and we're happy about that. You mentioned the Indiana Hotel that's attached to part yes, of how you want it. to call it mm -hmm. uh, the Embassy Theater there are plans for that as well. What, what, what do you want to do with the Indiana Hotel? It's been a, a, a several year process. Um, the recent, we talked about the re redevelopment downtown with Harrison Square and the ball field, and that really sparked a lot more interest in our building. Um, we had um, floors three through seven that had sat empty, and now the third floor is a corridor. And our board began working very hard, um, all, lots of years of talking about how to develop those upper floors. They've sat empty since the 70s and they would love to, to, to use them and make them viable. And their big plan, and we're starting to take it around and, and, and do a feasibility study with it and see what people think, but they would love to do a two-story ballroom on the top two floors, floor six and seven, with rooftop access. Mm. Wouldn't that be that marvelous? That would be wonderful. And the fifth floor would be rehearsal and classroom space because we're doing more with um, our own programming with education, and there's always a need for just big space. Fourth floor would become offices, and we would move from our offices from the second floor to the fourth floor, and the second floor would become donor lounge area more public space um, because you've been to the theater and, and historic lobbies are kind of this big yeah. um, and actually our, our lobby is fairly big for a historic theater. And it's, so. a, it's a gorgeous lobby that sounds like a great idea G good luck with that. Good. You know one of the major 
tenants, if you will, of, mm -hmm. of the Embassy Theater, of course, is, is the Fort Wayne Philharmonic. Yes. Uh, they do most of their, all of their masterwork concerts there. Yes. They have, uh, actually, they have a pop series coming up. Bernadette Peters is coming to town on yes. February 4th. February 4th, and she's, it's, she's wonderful. If, if people have, do not have a ticket, they are certainly missing out to see her perform. She's fabulous. And also, following that on February 18th, uh, another Philharmonic concert from Dark to Light. I know mm -hmm. Andrew is going to be on the show in a, in, a, in a week or two to talk more about it, but that's another opportunity to see the Philharmonic. Yes, they, a, a quarter of, of our, our show schedule is Philharmonic. They're very important to us and to this community. Our missions merge. And, and, and the embassy was actually saved from the Wrecking Ball in part to help the Philharmonic so that the Philharmonic would always have a place to perform. And, uh, boy, there's no better evening than that, than to hear that orchestra in that space. I tell yeah. you, I love it. it. It's a perfect you fit. Also yeah. bring in Broadway shows. Yes. You're going to be bringing in a show called Blast. Yes. Uh, and that's going to be on February 21st. Yes, and Blast is very much like Stomp, if people have, have seen the musicality of that. It, there's a marching band feel to it. I have seen pieces of it um, in, in performances um, in my travels, and, uh, and I was in marching band and had kids in marching band, so um, if, it will be very fun and delightful, and, and, and um, it has not been in Fort Wayne yet. Oh, so. good. What is Down the Line 6? That's going to be on February 25th. Yes. That is, is um, the Embassy's own event. Uh, we're a rental house, and most of the shows that are brought to us are brought by others. Um, but we do things that are our own. Festival Trees is our own, mm -hmm. and down the line, and this is the sixth year to do it. And we feature local bands um, covering famous folks. And this year, we've got four bands. We usually have five, um, but we're giving them more time to, to perform um, because they're doing some heavy stuff. Um, one of them's doing REM, one is doing Prince, one is doing um, Black Crows, and another is doing Steely Dan. Wow! Oh, so, Steely Dan, I like yeah. too. Yeah, so it's going to be, and it's a, it's a, it's not right. an expensive ticket, and it's a, it's a full night. And two of the bands are fronted by females, which we're always looking for that diversity in rock. Um, and it brings in a different audience that perhaps in. doesn't come yes. to the embassy all the time. You also have Cirque du Or coming in on March second and third, yes. which is like a Cirque du Soleil act, and yes. that's going to be at seven p.m. Mm -hmm. But I also, before we only have a few more few more seconds on the show, but you mentioned that, you know, the, 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 the Grand Page organ was one of the reasons why the building was saved, and you're yes. actually going to do a silent movie along with the Grand Page organ on, on March 4th, correct? Yes, and if you haven't seen a silent movie, you really need to go. It was before computers, before talkies, you know, and, and they did it all right there on the screen, and, and it, it is a wonderful thing And have the organ playing, just like in the old days, yes. which is the way the, the embassy was originally used, and that's yes. going to be Buster Keaton's Steamboat Bill. Yes, it's very fun. <laughs> and, well, Kelly, that's all the time we have on the show. It's always great to see it. It's, it's always great to go, go and visit the embassy Thank theater you. as well. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming it's, it's on. It's a delight. Thank you. <laughs> For more information about the Embassy and to buy tickets to any of their events, go to fwembassytheater.org or call the box office at 424-5665. Arts Weekly will return in a moment.